What is up, my friend? In this video, we're talking about the differences between historical and implied volatility, how they affect options pricing, how to add them both to your watch list inside interactive brokers, and what to focus on with your HV, IV when you're buying versus selling stock options. Let's get started first with what is historical volatility? The super easy way to remember this, historical volatility, it's in the name, history. It's the history and measurement of a stock's price in the past over a given period of time. That could be one year, two years, three years. Those numbers are going to be different in terms of the HV historical volatility. Whereas on the flip side, implied volatility is something completely different as it's future-based and prediction of what's going to come in the future for a stock and an estimation of what the stock price is likely to do moving forward. So you've got historical here, implied here, the history on one side, the future on the other. So as a stock options trader, what you want to look at is the implied volatility compared to the historical. If the implied volatility is high compared to historical, it means that options contracts are going to have inflated premiums and be worth more compared to areas when there's low volatility. We're talking again just about the implied. If the implied is high, the option contracts are high, which means buyers pay more and sellers get paid more to take on that risk. On the flip side, if the implied volatility is low relative to the historical volatility, and I'm going to show you an example in a second, it's going to make an environment where the options premiums are low and those that are buying options can do so very cheaply compared to when implied volatility is elevated. So low IV, options are cheap, that's good for buyers, bad for sellers. High IV, that's good for sellers, bad for buyers as the options premiums are inflated. And as the implied volatility kind of dips and dives and moves all around, it's always working to get itself back towards that historical volatility. There are gonna be spikes when it shoots away or breaks away, which I'm gonna show you on the chart coming up, where the IV really breaks away from the HV and the implied volatility is on a rampage. But ultimately it always cycles back and compresses down lower back to that historical volatility pattern after large periods of breakouts. And the super easy way to find this inside of interactive brokers is to do this. Go into a watch list and click this little gear icon right here in the top corner. That's going to open up your settings tab right there. If you click that button, get in there. And then what you want to do inside your market data columns in the available columns section here on the right, you want to have historical volatility and you want to have historical volatility percentage close. And you want to put that over, click the add button, put that in your list. Then you want to have implied volatility, implied volatility, closing implied volatility percentage right there at the top. Click that over. That will add your volatility numbers to your watch list right here. And you can see if the HV is here on this column and the IV or implied volatility is right there, what it means is that anytime that this closing implied volatility percentage is above the historical volatility, it means there's an inflated amount of implied volatility. So the future of the stock price is a little bit uncertain. There's potential for movement. So this number being larger means that options prices are currently inflated relative to the overall trading environment. You can see for Etsy, this is the case. You can see that for Nike, the closing implied volatility is lower than the historical, meaning it's not a great time for option sellers, but it could be a very good time to get some cheap options if you're a buyer. So what I like to do when I'm buying options, I'll go into this watch list chart and I'll have all my companies here on the left-hand side. And I will just filter by HV close and then see which is the highest historical volatility. So the highest kind of fluctuation in stock price. And I will just compare this with the IV here, the implied volatility saying, which one of these is lower than the historical? And you can see that NVIDIA is down. We're quickly scanning NVIDIA is one. And at the moment, it could be just NVIDIA. Everything else may be a little bit perked up. So there you go. NVIDIA would be the one, if I'm looking to buy call options right now or buy puts, I'm looking at the NVIDIA because the closing implied volatility is below the historical. So I should, in theory, be able to get these puts and calls, buying them if I'm in here with the blue at a cheaper price versus the selling of options. To take this idea one step further, I like to go into the volatility lab. And this is just for my own little background knowledge. I like to go here, two months, change that to a year. I like to change this to historical volatility and go close and then pop this guy out and see that right now the white line of the implied volatility is below 
the HV, which we see here again, it, it makes sense because this is what we're showing in our watch list as well over here for NVIDIA. We can see that 39 is the and NVIDIA closing IV and 41 is the HV on our chart here in the volatility lab. That's also the way it looks right there, very close. So we know these numbers are correct. And we can also say that as we're buying options, even though these are spaced out right now, there tends again to be these kind of periods where it drifts apart and then snaps back together. It drifts apart. This is a super high drift and it'll snap back together and it'll kind of invert and flip. So you have to always be wary as an option buyer that if this is a good environment right now, it could flip on you moving forward. Just something to be wary about if it is kind of around that HV area, it could spike or it could come together. When you are selling options, the flip slide is true. You want to be able to see this closing implied volatility. I like to sort it by the highest amount right there, because generally if you have a higher amount of closing implied volatility, it's going to be a large gap from your closing historical volatility. And you can see the top here, Etsy, Square, Tesla, just some examples here. Uh, SC is actually not that close to see limited. Meta is really like far up there. Amazon's up there. A lot of stocks right there are really kind of spaced out and high. And if I go into Tesla, for example, actually let's go into Etsy just because the spread is very, very large. If I was looking at 14 days out, my IV is 45%. Okay, maybe I want to go a little bit further out in time. And I'll go out 27, 47, 28 days out, 64%. There's a good jump in volatility right there. So maybe I'm going to target the November 3rd date for my expiration. I'm going to be either selling puts or selling calls, depending on where I think the stock may go. Based on this chart, it's kind of trending downward, downward, downward. I don't like the idea of this kind of bouncing. It has to make it kind of a move higher for that to happen. So from a volatility perspective, I'd be looking to sell puts in this example and then go ahead and get paid by selling a put out of the money a little bit and profiting that way. And again, we confirm this by going into our new window, volatility lab, same thing we did before. We should have the similar settings as before, one year, right? Historical, close, pop this bad boy out. And we can see that this white line is super inflated. So again, be wary as an option seller that this line could snap back down to reality, m and style. And if it does, it could lead to a quick turnaround in the term of volatility crush or spike, depending on where the line is relative to historical volatility. But it does work best for sellers in these kind of environments where it is inflated. But you can see that every time it gets up, it does come down, it does come back down to reality. And this is kind of the old adage, what goes up must come down. Eventually it does balance out around that historical volatility pattern. And that line is kind of the trigger point for it's gonna meet up. So you can buy options or sell them depending on the given volatility of the market or an individual stock. It just comes down to knowing that high volatility benefits the sellers, low volatility benefits the buyers, and anywhere in the middle is kind of fair game Everybody's at the table with the same kind of vibe. So understand what setups to look for when you're trading. Go find those volatility numbers inside your trading platform. And I will see you on the next video like this one if you got some value here today.